Hey, how's it going, everybody? I'm Justin. With me, as always, is uh, our editor in chief at Comic Book, Aaron Clutter. And Hi, everybody. this is the second show. This is New Comic Book Day Spectacular number two. Number two. It's like the sequel you didn't know was coming, but it came anyway. And it'll be a good sequel. It won't be like Paul Blart Mall Cop 2. <laughs> or, or Ted 2. So sad. So yeah. sad. So sad. Or Gremlins 2. Yeah. Actually, I kind of like Gremlins 2. Yeah, that, that was pretty that bad. Yeah. That was all right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. Yeah. All right. So, this was a big week. We had San Diego Comic Con just a few days ago. It wrapped up. Massive we news. Were. Massive everything. We got yeah. Batman and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles teaming up soon. It's going to be nuts. It's going to be crazy. Yeah. Um, really busy this weekend. It was terrible. I mean, we had so many articles. And if you guys start at comicbook.com, checked out all the news we had. If you go on there and just search like SDCC, you'll see all the tags from all the different articles that had to do with that. Um, tons of trailers for different movies that were released. Um, and one of the ones that kind of got passed over, not movies necessarily, but TV show, was the Shannara Chronicles, uh, Terry Brooks' um, fiction series which is an excellent sword and sorcery kind of series and it's actually set in the future so it's kind of cool it's kind of like after the fall of technology and you know magic's made a a comeback and it's really just a massive epic story and you it crosses generations and then he's he went back to kind of a prequel time um to talk about uh gerald shannara and some of the other um, predecessors ancestors kind of thing and I mean, just the books are great. And so MTV is actually mm-hmm. doing a series uh, executive produced by John Favreau. Kind of cool. Iron so, Man. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, the shirt you have on right now, the old, oh, yeah. Yeah. old one, yeah. um, you know, it, it just looks amazing. It's being filmed in New, New Zealand. And uh, of course that makes for, you know, expansive landscape shots, beautiful uh, trees and hills and uh, you know, all that stuff. So it's, it just looks really great. And I think the guy that plays in, uh, in arrow that plays Deathstroke, I can mm-hmm. never remember his name, but Manny he's going to something. I don't know. Don't know. Yeah. Ma- he's awesome. Manute though. or something. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, he is. He is. So he's going to be in it. Um, plays kind of a, you know, a, a hero character looking hero looking character. It's hard to tell. Um, but it looks great. Then the trailer, if you check out um, Tuesday's trailer park, or Tuesday trailer park that I posted yesterday. Uh, you can actually check that. That's the bottom trailer and you can watch. It's like three minutes. You have a little bit of uh, the, the producer and director is talking about the show. So it's, it's cool. It's kind of an inside uh, scoop on what the show is going to be, but MTV's had some good ones. They did scream this TV series, uh, which we're reviewing up by episode. Uh, Jeff Hill's doing that on our site. So mm-hmm. if you haven't checked that out, you can check out his reviews and then, uh, you know, this one coming up. So it's pretty, some neat stuff. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, like everybody else, I think I love seeing I don't know, the Batman versus Superman stuff was good. To actually see Wonder Woman in a yeah. little bit of action or something was good. Um, definitely looks better than what I had thought. <laughs> yeah, I think they've I think they've done some good things with it. I, I think they're still being real conservative when it comes to those three characters. Which yeah. I guess you know it's it's their prerogative, but um, the fans want uh, I at least want a Wonder Woman movie. Mm-hmm. You know, I want to see Wonder Woman her own film, um, not just kind of as a backup character. Which right. is what I felt. You know, it's like oh we got Batman vs Superman. Oh, and we'll throw in Wonder Woman because you want Wonder Woman. You know, um, but definitely looks better than Suicide Squad. Yeah. Some <laughs> jury's are, still out on that one. Some people are really, really pumped for it. And I'm just I Yeah. Don't I don't know. I was waiting for Will Smith to get in his jet and just fly off to destroy the aliens. Yeah, just do that. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Well, yeah. So I don't know. Anyway, we do have comic books to talk about this week. Uh, new comic book day for uh anybody who loves comics is Yay. Wednesday, unless, you know, through some act of God or act of whoever um, there is a, a delay in that. And I know some stores did uh, recognize they had some delays in delivery of certain variant covers for some books. So we'll talk about that near the end of the show. Um, we're going to go through each comic by publisher. So we'll have, you know, like all the DC first, and then we'll do 
blah, 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 until we get to the end. And sometime in between now and the end of the show, we're not going to tell you when, because it'll be a surprise. There, it, There's going to be a giveaway for two of these little guys. And these are the Ant-Man, the official Ant-Man bleacher creatures, still in the bag. I don't want to take them out, you know, to the, instead make it look like I'm going to suffocate him if you don't win. <laughs> um, so sometime in between now and the end of the show, I'll be telling you how you could win one of these guys uh, from bleachercreatures.com. If you don't want to watch the show and find out how to win one for free, you can go to bleachercreatures.com, check them out, and you can buy one yourself. And then you don't have to listen to us talk at all. So sure. we appreciate you listening, but Definitely. You know, if, if there's understand. something offensive, you know, just go buy your own. <laughs> yeah. So let's start with DC. Justin, you have way more of these than I did this, this week. Like know, double. I- Double the amount you get. I know. That's right. All right, I know. So we'll start. I got uh, Black Canary, issue number two. So this is our all-new Black Canary, who is a lead singer of a band and a crime fighter. So she's a busy girl. She's a busy girl. Sounds like uh, Spider Gwen. Well, you know, she's got a lot on her plate. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. yeah. So is that, Go ahead. Is that the all-new DC now? You DCU. <laughs> oh yes, yes. Why no, I'm sorry. Marvel. Why Marvel <clears throat> DC. <laughs> but I mean, like it's, okay. it's a new it's a new book. I like and I like Black Canary, so I'll give it a few issues and see how it really yeah. turns out. Um I think in this issue, is there anything worth showing? Um a little bit of the art. But uh if anything you know, I think she's training her band how to fight because she knows they're going to encounter some stuff. So. That's cool. It looks we'll uh, look kind of reminiscent of the Batgirl series. Yes. You think? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Pretty okay. close to it. Interesting. All right. Well, I got, I got a whopping one DC book this week. Um, I picked up Harley Quinn number eight. It's hard to believe this is still running, <laughs> but I, I will continue to buy this book as long as Amanda Connor and Jimmy Palmiotti continue to write and, and draw this book because it is, I, I like them. I always have, um, yeah. and really like Harley, you know, I like what they're doing with her. So, uh, we'll see what happens. Um, as long as they don't start changing her to match up with the Harley from the suicide squad movie, we'll be okay. The minute they do that book gets dropped. Definitely. So, uh, yeah, but you know, it's, it's funny. I mean, it's, it's really kind of a comedy book all the way through, uh, which is what it should be. Harley owns a building. She's got a freak show that lives in the downstairs and they actually operate a, a freak show. It's not just a bunch of weirdos. Um, but it, it's funny. It's just the different things going on with her and uh, her interacting with Poison Ivy and Power Girl and different characters that come and go throughout. So it's it's a good one. But aren't, aren't we getting a Harley and Poison Ivy series or mini series? I think so. I saw something about that. Yeah, I'm not sure if I'll get that one or not. I like the regular series, but I'm trying not to give in to DC. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I only get three, four books right now: Harley, Batmite, Bizarro, and He Man. And Batmite and Bizarro just hit issue Our two miniseries. of a six-issue miniseries. So yeah. once they're done, I'll get two books until uh, Jimmy Palmiotti and Amanda Connor leave that, and then I'll drop that, and then I'll do He Man until Dan Abnett start stops writing it. And once he stops writing it, I'll be like, "Sorry, you have nothing for me." I can't believe you're not getting Wonder Woman. Yep. I get a lot of books. That's one thing, you know, <clears throat> I, I have a five page pull list. I'm at with my you. Shop. I'm with you. <laughs> and some of these are, are gone. I, I actually had it printed off for me this week so that I could review it and mark off the things that need to go away because they're, they're old issues that are done, but still it's probably going to be three pages by the time I'm done. It's way too many books. This week was like the lightest week I've had in a month. So Anyway, <clears throat> moving on. You have one more DC book, right? I do, I do. And it is from the Mad Genius himself, Jeff Johns. I don't know if anybody else has ever called him a Mad Genius, but I did. <laughs> so this is part two of the Dark Side War. We have, you know, the Anti-Monitor um, going to go be going after uh, Dark Side. Oh, cool. Okay. And I mean, the first the first issue of this story arc was cool. We were introduced to um, Darkseid's daughter, uh, Grail. Uh, she basically kind of came into existence through vibrating out of the 
Flash. So <laughs> oh, okay, that's yeah, kind of weird. I mean, just kind of <laughs> used used him because she could like <clears throat> make him tap into whatever vibration or whatever. So she didn't need to need <laughs> a you know a boom tube. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, okay. I thought maybe meant she was like born from that. No, no, no. no. She okay. was around before that. But, okay. Uh, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> that would have been weird. Jason Fabok's doing the art, so it looks great. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Uh, okay. I, w- I looked at the last page, which you should never do. Right. And I'm not going to show anybody what it is, but uh, this book is three ninety nine, and the last the last page. It's worth twenty bucks. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. And that's so, Justice League number what? Justice League number forty two. The okay. Dark, 42. Dark Side War Part Two. Okay. Cool. Yeah, there was one other book that I looked at and it's doomed. Yeah. Did you, look, did you see that one? I saw, well, I don't know what that one's about. You know, they had the Superman doomed um, right. earlier on, which and that was in uh, I was actually getting Superman and Superman Wonder Woman and all those books. So I picked up that whole series and it was good because it was like doomsday was a virus kind of thing mm-hmm. or a, a something, a pollen or whatever. Right. And he got infected. Superman got infected. So it was cool the way they did the story. Sorry. And that um, it was, it was a cool story, but I don't know what they're doing with this one. So, and I missed number one, number two was out this week and I was kind of like, do I want to buy it? And then I thought, no, so, moving on to image, um, I got quite a few image books this week. So I'll start out with uh, the first one of that. Many of me. Yeah, yeah. Actually, did you, well, how many did you get? One. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll do a couple of mine, and then you can do you. So I wonder um, if we got. I wonder if you got the one I got. I don't think. Oh, I don't did. know. We'll find out. Um, so Drifter is out this week, which. Uh, this is pretty cool. This is Drifter number six. Um, it's been a very interesting kind of sci-fi-ish series, um, and there's some weird time jumping and stuff going on. It's it's pretty it's pretty interesting. Um, Ivan Brandon writes it, and Nick Klein's art is pretty is really cool. Um, just like this scene right here is just. I love no. that art. It's just really cool. So anyway, um, it's worth picking up just to check it out. Um, but the, you know, number six is out. You probably can still find one through five. Most places you can. still have them. And yep. because it's image one through five will be in a trade very, that's very right. soon for 10 bucks. That's very true. Yeah. So that's cheaper than going and buying the whole series. Um, but yeah, so drifter number six is out. Pick that one up. <clears throat> this was one I was really looking forward to, uh, Jimmy Robinson series, the empty. And this has been really neat. It's got some great covers. I love the the artwork on the covers. And the interior art is just amazing. Um, real, a lot of detail. You know, you got some kind of cartoonishy kind of characters, and you have some characters that are not cartoonishy, you know. Um, it, it's an interesting story, and this really takes us deeper into the story. This is issue five. Um, at the end of issue four, though, so you have uh, characters who are traveling across country to try to save their world. And uh, you have this other character who fell from her world to like the lower world. And she found out she's got the power to make plant life grow and flourish where oh, wow. the people in the world, in the lower world are all starving and they're in a drought and it's terrible. So there's some kind of weird tentacle thing that's crossed the land and it's poisoning everything. Well, in issue four, they found out that it was a pipeline of some kind carrying some sort of hazardous waste. So they've stepped in at the end into the heart of the, the tentacle, and uh, now they're going to find out what's going to happen. So it looks, looks pretty cool, pretty exciting. Oh, wow. Yeah, It's been a great story. I mean, really well written. I like the, the, the way the series has gone. It's been some really cool stuff. Like they came to a point where uh, they, they uh, interacted with this clan of giant bugs, and they had to fight this huge centipede thing. It was, it was pretty cool. So uh, I'll do one more, and then I'll let you do yours, and then we'll... Maybe you have one that maybe you got one that I already got. Um, empty zone number two. Um, I picked up empty zone number one just because the cover was cool. This cover is really cool. Mm-hmm. The series is, I don't know how to describe it. It's kind of sci fi ish. Um, it, and it's got some great artwork to it. It's a, it's a pretty deep story. So um, Jason Sean Alexander writes it. And it's it's worth checking out because uh, this is number two. You should still be able to pick up number one, but it, it's a pretty neat story. I don't even know how to describe it. 
Yep. It's so good, words can't tell you. I mean, you know, it's hard sometimes reading issue one and you go, oh, lots of stuff going on. There's a girl right. with a robot arm and there's some other things going on. And it's like, what is this story about? It's not as yeah. bad as like a Warren Ellis book, but you know, we got to read five issues to get the story. Yeah. But, or you're, uh, you're still at like issue nine going, wait, what? <laughs> yeah. Where did that come from? So, okay. My one image book this week is Invincible. This I didn't year. get that one. See? So 121, and this is Robert Kirkman also. Yep. Yep. You like so, him. I do. I do too. He, he does good work. Mm-hmm. Lot. But, I mean, this series, have you read any Invincible before? Yep. I read the first 10 or I think I had the first 20 issues at one point. That's oh, that's crazy. cool. Yeah. yeah. I, I got the first 20 issues because I, when I, when it first came out, I was like, oh, this is cool. Uh, yeah. I kind of picked it yeah. up, you know. And then sold them for a bunch of money. Cool. <laughs> I don't know the truth. But, I mean, it's invincible. It's a really good book. Um, things are moving around in space, but there's going to be a change coming up on the book in a couple issues. So, Cool. Something Not to sure. to. Yeah, definitely. It's a good, you know, good jumping on point just to give you a little background story. And actually, if you just go back three issues, that issue was only 25 cents. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's always nice. Yeah, cool. that was that was amazing. I mean, how, how how often do you see a publisher release a book that's above issue one hundred? Yeah, for twenty five cents, just as like a promotion to you know yeah. get new writer readers. You don't Other than that. Marvel, when they did the twenty five cent X Men a few years back, but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but you remember the one with Wolverine and he's like jumping out of the page. Uh, it was twenty five yeah. cents. Yeah, I have like five copies. I don't know. So speaking of long story Warren Ellis books, trees about big giant tree things that came down and planted themselves on the earth. It's, it's a good story. It's very interesting. These last couple issues have really piled on the, the story, which is cool. We're getting to the point where we're starting to discover some things. And uh, I think they're, they're really making some progress towards whatever the the point of the story is. Are they going to fight back against the trees? Are they going to find a solution to the, the black growing flowers that are killing people? Um, you know, are the governments of the world going to collapse? I, I, I don't know. It's, it's cool though. Trees is good. What, what issues that? 11. Okay. I read up to eight. I'm not that far back. I can get yeah. caught up. Okay. Cool. Yeah. And, and it's been good. Uh, the first three or four issues I had trouble, like issue four or five, I was like, eh, I'm going to drop this. And then I got issue six. And I was like, Oh, okay. Pull me back in. So I, I've stayed with it. We'll see. Uh, we'll see if it keeps going. Okay. So um, rain has been a superb series. The artwork has been great. I really, really liked it. Um, you know, it's, this is uh just some art sample here. Nice. Pretty cool. I mean, it's good. Um, this is, uh, Kel Simons and Nate Stockman does the art. Paul Little does the colors, and it's really cool. It's just a, a neat, it's kind of like a fantasy sci fi ish combination story. And you've got people who have powers and who don't know they have powers and they find out they have powers. And there's like slug things and there's sci fi people. And I, it's, it's a little bit of everything that makes a comic book cool. So rain R E Y N pretty cool. Good one. And this is number six out this week. And my shop still has one through five on the shelf. So, um, it was one of those that nobody really picked up when they got it. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, once I found, I I think I saw four was on the shelf, went back to pick up one, two and three. And then I read through like, Oh, this is great. And, uh, now that six is out, it's it's another good one. So is that, I mean, is that just image or is that from, that's not top cow, is it? No, that's just image. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, I got one more image book and I got one image top cow book. So you didn't pick up the mantle number three this week. I didn't see it. <sighs> yeah. The mantle number three comes out. So we had an interview um, a few weeks ago with um, uh, Brian level and Jordan Boyd, who are oh, the, the um, the artist and the colorist on this book. Um, Ed Brisson wasn't available, but uh, we did, you know, kind of talk with them, like through them, 
to him, sort of. So, uh, so you might want to check out on our channel uh, the Mantle interview, and you can kind of see some stuff about the Mantle as it, as it started out. It's a superhero book, but it kind of breaks all the rules of superhero books. So it's really yep. a, a cool series, um, definitely worth picking up. And uh, it, this, you know, this is uh, a power that passes from person to person. The mantle, you know, as the right. mantle passes. So it mantle. it's it's cool. So this is number three. You should still be able to get one and two. Um, this is also uh, it's an image and shadow line book. So it's uh, you know uh, across the, those two uh, publishers. So it's pretty cool. I guess I will be going back to the comic book store tomorrow. Yep, to add to your list. I need to get bags and boards anyway. That's good. And we'll talk about maybe we'll talk about that a little bit too at the end of, um, about what, how we take care of our comics. Yeah, so important. Um, Postal number five, Top Cow Image. This is a pretty cool book. Um, if you haven't been reading this one, it, it's worth picking up. There's, um, it's Postal because it's based on the the main character who's the postman for this little town, and the town is like some kind of a uh, relocation for people who are criminals. It's like a um, sort it's of like a prison, town. sort of like yeah. a prison town, sort of like a um, Oh, what is it? Witness protection, almost. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's weird. But there's been some things going on, um, some crazy stuff, and his girlfriend got killed, and they found out his mom did it, and his mom's like the crazy leader of the town, and she's trying to protect the town, and I don't know. It's it's just, it's been really good, though. Um, Matt Hawkins writes it. Um, Brian Hill does uh, art. So it's, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Brian Hill and Matt Hawkins are the writers. Isaac Goodhart does the art. Um, that's pretty cool. The art is, uh, the art's good. Here's a kind of a middle shot. It's dark. Yeah. It's dark, but it's, uh, it's pretty cool looking. So it's been a good story worth picking up. So this is postal number five, one through four, um, probably still out. You can find them. Okay. That's it for image this week. Yep. And I know there were some other image books. I think the Island, uh, mm -hmm. which I didn't pick up was like a hardcover. Um, and what was the other one? Uh, I don't Roche know. Limit. Buy it. You can get the Roche Limit. This oh, time? yeah. Yeah. Roche Limit was out. Uh, tran uh, what's Skull it? Kickers. And Skull Kickers. Yeah. There's some, some other good ones. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. Definitely let us know in the comments oh. if you pick up any of those books. I guess the other big one would be Revival. Oh, yeah. I almost picked that up because it did look pretty cool. The cover was neat. Um, kind of a, a dark cover, but mm -hmm. it's pretty cool looking. So. All right. Well, next I have an Oni book, Oni Press. Yeah. And you didn't pick this up either. Dang it. <laughs> Kaiju Max, uh, number three? No, number yeah, four. Number four. Number four is out this week. So uh, Kaiju Max, you know, we did an interview with Xander Cannon. Um, definitely check that interview out because that was pretty cool. Pre um, number one coming out. Um, this has been a great series. The Kaiju Max is the maximum security prison for Kaiju giant monsters. And so if you, uh, you know, you watch Pacific Rim or Godzilla, you know what the giant monsters are. So this is the maximum security prison they live in. And you got all the prison type stuff going on, you know, the, the corrupt guards and uh, drugs and all this stuff. It's just really a cool series. Yeah. Um, it's, you know, I, the, the artwork is great because the artwork is just so cartoony. And it seems so off from the story because you got the st the story is it's a prison story, you yep. know, people getting shivved and people getting, uh, you know, trading for drugs and doing all this stuff. And then it's like, oh, I'm a little cartoon monster. Everything's so colorful. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. Bend over in the shower, you know. I mean, it's just <laughs> it's, something else. It's so. in a very nice setting of an island, too. So you're it like, is. Oh, it doesn't look bad. It's pretty cool, and the uh, the guards all have the um, uh, like the Ultraman suits. Mm -hmm. so they can get big, you know, and fight against the monsters if they have to. It's it's pretty cool. It's got some great stuff. Um, Xander Cannon does a great job with it. It's it's really, really well worth picking up. So that's Kaiju Max number four from Oni Press. All right, um, two I have to pick up. It seems like, and this is what happened last week with the show. I had <laughs> yep. I probably picked up four books afterwards. <laughs> Well, I always I always look through my pool, and we'll talk about pools at the end of this too, so in case you guys don't know what a pool is. And then uh, I always go to the shelf 
and we can talk about shelves too if you guys don't know what shelves are um and then talk okay. about you know but i always go through the shelf and i go oh, okay this and this and then i'll go up front and i'll go okay can you adjust my pole and just add these because these are cool books or maybe they didn't pull one for me and they should have you know anyway so i have a couple of um dynamite books do you have anything from dynamite no i'm, I'm down to the one publisher left oh okay okay well i'll do my dynamite books then yeah um Swords of Sorrow, number, oh, this is the Vampirella and Jennifer Blood. Um, and this is number three of four. Got a cool looking cover, you know, nice. if you like Vampirella nice. hanging out all over. Yeah. Um, it's been a really good series. The Swords of Sorrow storyline has been just awesome. Uh, Swords of Sorrow number three was out last week, and that really set the stage now. They were hunting for the Philosopher's Stone. And the good guys, mm -hmm. at least as far as we can tell, the good guys, uh, Vampirella and Jennifer Blood and uh, Lady Zorro and all those got a hold of the Philosopher's Stone at the end. So um, mm -hmm. that was good. Um, and we found out that the bad guy, the big bad guy, is Prince Charming. And that he had his heart broken, and therefore he's trying to destroy everything good. But his true love, Snow White, the Traveler, the woman, who is the, the good guy, uh, who's gotten all of the other, um, you know, Vampirella and everybody on her team knows where snow white is she actually has her and so wants to kind of settle things with the uh, with prince charming and he's like no i'll never settle i'll kill you you know so it's interesting storyline it's it's pretty cool a lot deeper than i thought it was going to be but yeah. uh jennifer blood vampire uh, vampirella out this week uh definitely a good continuation these side stories are pretty cool because the, they have two characters who you wouldn't expect to be working together kind of work together um because jennifer blood is sort of a vampire hunter kind of person. And then Vampirella is, you know, kind of a vampire. Kind of a vampire. Yeah. So it's pretty cool. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Yeah. Um, so other than that for dynamite, I have tales of the reanimator and this is the final issue. Number four of the series. I believe this is the last issue. Um, oh, well, I don't know. It just says chapter four. So, um, I don't know. It's it's cool. I love these covers, the old EC kind of looking covers. Mm -hmm. uh, they did a good job with some of the variants that they did. Uh, it's been a cool story. If you guys know uh, Reanimator, the the the, the uh, movie. If you don't know it, check out our website, comicbook.com. Go up and type in Reanimator, and you and I have a a movie review of it uh, a few weeks ago, just to kind of get ready for this series when it came out a couple months ago, I guess. Um, but it's it was pretty cool movie. It's based on an H.P. Lovecraft story, and it's about a guy who, through arcane means, comes up with this formula to resurrect the dead and bring people back to life. So it's pretty cool. Uh, but this is, you know, continuing tales of him uh, along with his assistant and some weird creatures that he has working for him. So it's been good. Yeah. Um, I have. Oh, I got all those Marvel books, too. You got Marvel book, right? Is that all you have yeah, left? Yeah, I got eight of them. Oh, okay, good. So you go ahead and do your one. Your other, one other than Marvel. No, 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 I'm done. Oh, oh, oh got, all you have I've is only Marvel. Got Marvel okay. yeah. All right, well, I don't know why you didn't pick this one up. Because, what is it? Godzilla in Hell. Oh, because it's Godzilla in Hell. But it's Godzilla yeah. in Hell. I, was, I I like Godzilla. I thought this was cool. It's the first issue from IDW, Godzilla in Hell. Something interesting to pick up. Um, the art is just crazy. I, I really like the artwork. It does look good, yeah. It's all over the place. Um, it doesn't look like there's much as far as words. I think it's just pretty much like flip through and look at the pictures. But it looks really cool. So uh, if you like Godzilla, if you like Hell, I, I don't know. It's, you know, maybe this one's for you. Check it out. That was my only IDW book this week. Usually I have two or three of those. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Same thing with Boom. This is my only Boom book. Big Trouble in Little China, number 13. I love the cover. Really cool looking. Um, so yeah, this it's like an old like, Chinese or Japanese painting. It does. Yep, yeah, it does look like that. The ones that they do with the big, long brushes. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, this has been a great series. You know, the continuing story of uh, Jack Burton and the Pork Chop Express. And right now he's trying to escape from... One of the many hells, uh, him and Lopan have been kind of duking it out. And uh, Jack teamed up with this other little, uh, well, this big giant guy, but who turned out to be a little tiny guy in armor, a demon, and uh, befriended him. 
And in the end of the last episode or last issue, he left him as the ruler of hell, basically <laughs> gave him this big sword. So this is too much, inf- too much uh, responsibility for me here. You take it. And the guy's like, Oh wow. Nobody ever gave me anything before. <laughs> so it's yeah. pretty cool. This is a great series. I really like this. <clears throat> Marvel. Awesome. Marvel. So, well, actually I got a couple other books, Marvel. And we'll do this before Marvel. Yeah. Go so ahead. this is the big deal this week for us. Valiant has book of death. Um, Number one, this Book of Death is a, just a really cool series. We, you know, we haven't read it yet. We're supposed to read it today and do our Valiant, uh, Valiant series for tomorrow. So take a look for Thursday's Valiant Effort. We'll be reviewing Book of Death number one. We'll be reviewing um, the Legend of the Geomancer, which is mm-hmm. like the hot book from Valiant and extremely hard to get <clears throat> because in order to get one copy of that, each store had to order 10 copies of this. Uh, not necessarily the blank one. They could have ordered the you know the regular covers, but um, this is one of the variants. I thought the blank was cool. And My shop to... told me it was twenty five. Twenty five? Oh, that's maybe. Why they, that's why they ordered one hundred and twenty five, and they got five. Oh, okay. Well, maybe it was. I thought it was ten. I thought I was reading somewhere it was ten. I don't know. This was the um, twenty issue variant. So once you got twenty, I think this was twenty copies. Then you got one of these. Um, maybe this was ten. Maybe that's what I was thinking of. But it looks cool because it looks like one of the old Valiant books. Yeah, so, yeah, that's pretty neat. Yeah, that, that, yeah, but I thought that was cool. So anyway, mm-hmm. we'll be reading those uh, and reviewing those tomorrow. Those two books, and then what? We had a third Valiant book. Drop too, dead right? number three. Oh yeah, dead drop number three. Dead drop. That's um, right. Sorry. Yeah, and so that's a that's been a neat series so far. So that's Alice Cott, right? Mm-hmm. So cool stuff from Valiant. Uh, definitely worth watching out for. Uh, you know, if you see a copy of uh, Legends of the Geomancer laying around. Uh, pick it up. It'll be yeah. worth it. Yeah. All right. Good luck with that. Yeah. <laughs> it was 40 bucks at my shop. So just, just saying, uh, just because it was so limited. Right. So. <clears throat> All right. What do you got for Marvel? All right. Marvel. So many books. If you got eight, you probably got all the ones I got. So you can do the talk and the rest of the show. Okay. Okay. <laughs> well, I may not. You may. What about Planet Hulk number three? We could give this away right now. We might as well. I got Planet Hulk number three. Yeah. <laughs> Captain America. Go ahead and talk about that one first. Um, actually, I didn't get one or two. Really? Now, yeah. I've, I loved what I've heard. I've, that's what I've heard yeah. so much good things about them. That's why I had yeah. to pick this one up. It was a great series so far. Captain America and Devil Dinosaur. I mean, you got that. That's a great team up. Uh, and then Doc Green, Hulk. Um, showing up and being kind of like, I need your help to defeat the other Hulks. Basically, <laughs> it's like yeah. I need your help to fix things, kind of thing. So, Zanor. Oh, Zanor. very cool. Yep, yeah, it's really neat. Who's uh, who's doing the artwork on it? To uh, so I think it, it um, Sam Humphreys is writing it. Mark Lamy. Mark, yeah, Mark Lamy. Okay, that's pretty cool. And Jordan Boyd does the col- the colors. So yeah, it's pretty neat. Uh, it's been a great story. The end of the last episode, land of the last issue. I always do that last episode. Um, him and Devil Dinosaur, Captain America and Devil Dinosaur had fallen down into this water thing. A tentacle had grabbed them, and so it was all scary. Like, what's going to happen? So we'll see. Uh, see if they survive. Probably. Yeah. So, okay. Well, let's do this giveaway. Okay. So now that you are sunk in, you've watched all these these comics. You want more comic book stuff. Ant Man comes out. This weekend, right? Yep, the 17th. So, if you want to win one of these little guys, and you can see they're pretty cool, Bleacher Creatures, official Ant-Man, Marvel merchandise, um, you can win one. All you got to do is comment down below. What did we say? The comment. connection between. Oh, yes. Comment the, the connection between. Now, this, this is really easy. I mean, I looked it up in like five seconds. The connection between Ant-Man and The Walking Dead. Okay, now we were going to talk about, well, name all the characters, the, all the different people who have been Ant-Man, you know, there's, and or tell us how many different people have been Ant-Man, mm-hmm. uh, you know, but we figured it'd be easier to just give you a little trivia question. What is the connection? And it's very simple. It's one person. The connection between Ant-Man as a character and The Walking Dead. Okay. Potentially so, that person's already been mentioned. That's true. That is very true. And we talked about a lot of people, so, you know. Um, and we'd love to interview this guy 
on our show someday. Um, but Ant Man comes out this weekend. Definitely, worth, you know, checking out the movie. If you want to win a, a cool little guy. Uh, what we're gonna do is if we get ten comments with the correct answer, then we'll give one of these away. If we get twenty comments with the correct answer, we'll give two of these away. So I have two. So just you know, think about that. And every ten answers you get put into a drawing. I'll pick one. So if you're one of the first 10, you'll be in that drawing from the first 10. Um, and it'll just be the 10 correct answers. So even if I get 10 total answers and nine of them are wrong and you're the only right one, you'll win it. Just right. telling you. But if I get 10, I give one away no matter what. If we get 20 and they're, you know, 20 right answers, I'll do the two. So um, that's all you got to do. Comment it, on the and article. Or on the, and it goes the, until next Tuesday. So you have yep. a full week. Yep. So what we'll do is um, this video now, we, uh, this is another thing, and I'll talk about this at the end too. We have a new Facebook page, Two Comic Book Dudes. Uh, so definitely check that out. Give us a like, share stuff there. Um, we really appreciate it. All of our videos will be posted on that, on that page, um, as well as being nested in an article and posted on comicbook.com and shared on comicbook.com and all that stuff. So, uh, or on the comic book Facebook page. So what we would like you to do is either go to the YouTube show here and comment down below or on the share on our facebook page on the two comic book dudes facebook page comment there and uh we'll be looking both places collecting all the answers and uh sending you out some free stuff yep okay and, and if I we get do. if we get a thousand comments it's only going to be those first 10 and first 20 people so well <laughs> it'll be everybody who gets the right answer for the second you know, the second after the first 10 i'll put yeah. you all in one drawing and I'll give you one away. Yeah, if we get a thousand comments, that means we got a thousand views on this, and I'll probably crap my pants. So, <laughs> I'll we'll buy a couple more and give out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And if you're interested, if you don't want to try the giveaway, if you just say, "Oh, I'm never lucky," just go right. to BleacherCreatures.com and you can buy your own. They're right there. Right. Uh, they actually released on the seventh. Oh, they released tomorrow, so you can get them tomorrow. Oh no, this is July. They've been out for a couple weeks, so. Um, June 17th, they released, so they've been out for almost a month. But you can get them um, right there on their website. Awesome. All right. We'll so put have... a link in the description below for their website. Yes. So you had Planet Hulk. Yep. I have Drawing of the Three, House of Cards, number five of five. The Stephen King. I, I love the Dark, the Dark Tower Dark series. Tower. So the uh, adaptations of the Dark Tower series have been really good. And this has been a cool series because they've done some different things. Like it doesn't exactly follow the book, which is cool. Mm -hmm. It still tells the same story, but it gives you some variation, which is good. Because, you know, at least for me, I don't want to read the exact same story in the comic book that I'm reading in the book. I want some variation. Well, I want some. Yeah, it's got to be somewhat different. Yeah. But this is great. Um, you know, this is... Uh, Oh, shoot, I can't remember how they did this. Um, this is written by Peter David, which is really cool. I like Peter David stuff. Uh, and Piotr Kowalski does the art. And the art is has just been really, really um, detailed and, and excellent in this series. So I love, if I could hold it still, right? Uh, I love the detail that he puts into the artwork. Uh, it's just really cool. So... Uh, but this is the wrap up of this series, and there's going to be another one because the prisoner was first, and House of Cards. Um, then there'll be another drawing of the three series coming uh, coming pretty soon. So, if you like Stephen King, if you like the Dark Tower series, this is worth picking up. Awesome. Yeah, I remember I read like uh, the first book, The Gunslinger. I really liked it. Yeah, and there's several of those: The Long Road Home and mm -hmm. um, the um, uh, Gunslinger Born. That was pretty cool. I like that series. Yeah. The, um, Peter, uh, was it Peter Isonova that does the art? Richard, know. Richard, I'm sorry, Richard Isonova. Uh, he did uh, Origin, and Jay Lee did some artwork for it too. It was excellent. Yeah. Oh, cool. I'll well, check it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. What's your uh, next one? Hell Hydra number one. Oh, I did not pick that up. Yeah, this one sounds crazy. It's like uh, Nomad. Hmm is the adopted son of Steve Rogers. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Well, that's um, that goes along with the uh, Dimension X or Dimension Z thing that happened 
Okay, well this this must be what it's based on because Baron Zemo yeah. is all over this thing. Yeah, well the um <clears throat> it was Baron Zemo, it was um what was not Baron Zemo. Oh yeah, no no, yeah, Zemo with the the thing in his chest, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was thinking so, of the other guy. I mean it it looks pretty good. It's a number one from Secret Wars, so I figured I'd give it a try. Yeah, yeah cool. You have to let me know how it is. Yeah. Okay. Well, I picked up number two of Corvac Quest, which I did Corvac Saga. Sorry, um, you know this has been a cool series because this one is one of the few that continued from the pre Secret Wars storyline. I kind of felt like um, the Guardians three thousand series uh, mm-hmm. was what six or seven issues, and right. uh, it, it was pretty cool. And Dan Abnett, of course, my favorite writer right now, almost uh, writes this series, but that was a cool series because you had this character who was kind of the focal point of the story all of time kept changing around her but she stayed uh constant all the way through and so when it came down to it they came back to earth and there were like um ultrons all over the place and our iron mans and it was was iron man whatever Uh, but it was cool just a, a neat series and she her name is uh gina drake and uh so now now they're in the um they're, they've gone back to Avengers Mansion. They're trying to find out what happened uh, in in this story. So um, it's pretty cool. But this is, you know, like a quarterback world that they're on mm-hmm. in part of Battle World. So it's been neat. Yeah. I, and, uh, I, like, I like the cover with uh, Power Man and, uh, oh, no, what, Power Man. What? <laughs> Wonder <laughs> Man and Charlie 27 duking it out there on the front. Power Man. Luke Cage is nowhere on here. I don't see him. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, all right. Next, I got the Siege issue oh, one. I didn't get that one either. Siege. I uh, well, it looks like it may have something to do with the wall, but I'm okay. not 100 percent sure. Uh, yeah. So I don't. I don't know. Same thing. Secret Wars. It's the first issue. I wanted to jump in and just see if it was worth anything. You know. Yeah. The yeah. art is by. Uh, hold on. Let me find that. You can go ahead and say what you're saying. I'm sorry. Yeah, I you know, the Battle Worlds ones, I've kind of kept away from them. I don't get very many of the Battle Worlds books. Um, the only one, in fact, is the next one that I'll talk about. Um, so, I, yeah, I just haven't been picking them up. Yeah. No, that's not. This one, Karen Gillen's the writer. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Super I like Karen Gillen. Super mm-hmm. freaky. Cool. Um, yeah, this is the only Battle Worlds book I'm getting. In Human Settling Rising. Yeah, yep. this has been a good series. It's kind of cool because the the it's really a twisty story. You know, you have uh, this bar and Blackagar Boltagon is Black-a-gar. the is the bartender. And he can talk. Cool. Yeah, and he can talk. I know. So it's neat. Uh, Medusa sends her spy in to try to find out about the the uh, rebels against uh, God Emperor Doom. You know, and uh, at the end of last episode or last issue, oh, I said at the end, end of last issue, they were. They were found out, and everybody had to evacuate. So we'll have to find out what happens in uh, issue number three. So Big Easy's been busted. That's right. That's right. Um, and this is written by Charles Soule. Really cool. Uh, John Timms does the artwork, and uh, you know, it, it's good art. Pretty detailed. Mm-hmm. A lot of action in this issue, uh, as Medusa kind of brings her forces to bear, because uh, she's the Baron of this world. So it's. Uh, it's to be interesting. And I'll have yeah. one more Marvel book, so oh, you, no. probably, you probably got it. Oh, maybe. Uh, my next one is Years of Future Past. I did not get that one. Oh, it's, but it's so good. It's so <laughs> yeah. Good. I picked up the first issue of all of those, and then I was like, eh. I had to pick and choose, you know, like Inferno no, and those. I just I decided not to. Yeah, I, I think I'm getting most of the X crossovers with battle world or whatever but this one's cool because we get loki who is now a full-blown dragon oh interesting kitty's been hiding him away all this time cool so we'll see where yeah well the only other one i got and i picked up you're gonna be like oh i want that cover i got the gwenham cover for guardians of nowhere Jeez, nice yeah Uh, yeah that was pretty cool here's a normal cover so yeah Guardians of Nowhere, you know, actually, uh, obviously Guardians of the Galaxy, um, Nowhere being the uh, the head of a celestial, 
uh, that that uh, we've heard about all through uh, Guardians of the Galaxy and the movie and all that stuff. Um, so this is uh, this is pretty cool looking. It's uh, first issue, so we'll find out where it's going. Um, we'll have Angela, we'll have you know Gamora and all the goodies in here. So uh, I, I'm I'm excited to read this one. You know, and I I don't get excited about a lot of Marvel stuff right now. So <laughs> well, I guess I guess are we having is Groot in here too? Because we're missing Peter Quill. Star Lord is not in this book. Yes, right, so. and that's what, and we still don't know kind of what's going on with him because he's he's, he's with, with the, main, he's the with Corvac the, guys. He's here. Peter Quill, isn't he? No, no. Where was he? he was, he's he was in on one of the, the other books. He was on the raft. He's in the main Secret Wars book. He was in the raft. Oh, right, right. That's right. That's right. Yeah, he sh- he did show up in the Guardians. No, he did show up in Guardians. In the Korvac thing, oh, okay. but maybe he's doing something else now because he because it was him. Well, he like could, the Guardians he, now and the Guardians of the Future. And well, if you remember what happened at the end of Secret Wars four, Sheriff Strange threw everybody to the four corners of the you know battle right. world. So he could right. he they they are going to have to show up in other books now. So yep, yeah, that's true. So we'll see we'll see if he shows up there again. But yeah, it should be cool. Okay, I got All three right. more. Three more. Wow. Marvel. This is amazing because I'm out of books and you have more books. <laughs> well, it's only because like you total, you got more. I just got more. Yeah. Marvel. Yep. All right. So one of my favorites from the first round of secret wars, because it was a good story and it raised like, I don't know. It was just characters being aware of what's going on. Uh, so it's Captain Marvel and uh, Carol Corp number two. That's cool. Yeah. I like the cover. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's great. It's like she signed, you know, a photo of herself. Yeah, yep. <laughs> yeah, I, I kind of lost the, uh, I don't know, I kind of lost touch with the whole Captain Marvel thing, because there's like a bunch of Captain Marvels now, right? Oh like yeah, Carol she's Korn. in like in every book. No, yeah. no, 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 no. She's the only one that's Captain Marvel. The core are female fighter pilots. Oh, okay, that's cool. So, so it's like she's the leader of a of a of a squadron of fighter pilots. Oh, okay, interesting. Yeah. All right. They all yeah, fly. Okay. He's still just Captain Marvel. I liked her in Spider Island. <laughs> no, as a spider? Spider, yeah. <laughs> She's like all the eyes on her forehead. I'm like, oh, that's awesome. Oh, but then at the end, they give her uh, the Mobius serum, turn her into the vampire. Right, right. That was pretty cool. Spoilers. So, yeah, if you didn't read that last week, too bad. You just found out how it ended. <laughs> they change other characters, too. It's still worth the read it. Yeah, Go ahead. It's pretty cool. All right, next. Uh, I got Captain Britain. And the Mighty Defenders, just because, why not? Yeah, it's another um, Captain something and something something, so. <laughs> right, I mean, we have a spider character of some sort here at the bottom. Interesting. Uh, so I am not sure what lies in for us on this one. Um, I would assume it has to do with the land that um, Captain Britain is the Baron of. Yeah. But I'm not 100 percent because there were several Captain Britons. Whoa. Okay. And the Spider Person wears a cloak. Oh. Okay. I'm I don't know who that you, would be. I'm going to show you this because I don't know who it is. It's not Spider Man. It's somebody who took up the mantle of Spider Man. Oh, okay. Hmm. Interesting. Uh-huh. I don't know. Almost looks like a, a Spanish character. Weird. Huh. It, it does. Yeah. That's but, cool. Maybe uh, like it's like a scarlet spider or something, maybe or I don't know. I mean it, it kinda goes uh, into it, so I'll read it and I'll let you know for sure. Could be the next Spider Gwen and you should buy that book. Everybody should run out and buy it right now. <laughs> Here's the weird thing though. The which one? Oh the big oh. giant earth thing? Yeah. Huh. That's weird. Okay. Maybe I'll go pick that up. How would they have a representation of Earth in Battle World? Yeah, that is weird. Like somebody remembers what it looks what it looks like. Well, yeah. Battle World is a round ball with a bunch of things, so I mean, it could just they be could, a well. They, but they can't leave. I don't know. It's weird. Yeah. yeah. But people people are starting to remember because Spider Gwen remembers the Mary Janes. Right. Right. 
Yeah, there's been little things. So it's interesting that that whole uh, the uh, Spider Verse series is pretty cool because you got Spider Gwen and and uh, Peter Porker and all the different characters, and they're fighting against Osborn. Even though Osborn's kind of like, well, wait, I'm actually here to help you guys. Yeah. And they're like, well, they just have the hard to believe. Like, what? You're the oh. bad guy all the time. <laughs> He's like, no, no, no. I'm trying to help. So we'll see what happens. All right, last book. Okay. Because it's the end of a run. Hawkeye 22. Hmm. Yep. Now, I picked up that first, the all-new Hawkeye. Like the I first couple issues. I did too. Has there been more than that? Three. It's up to three. Okay, I think I missed three. I don't know. I'll have to look at my It's got like, of kind of a cool... And... The cover of it looks like old Hawkeye. With like the, the old oh. Hawkeye suit with like the full... The, Oh, okay. Yeah, everything. I missed it because so, it's not on my pull list. So, oh, but well. there's going to be all right. So that's weird though because all right. So this one ended. Then we have yep. the one we were just talking about, and then there's going to be a, a another Hawkeye title. Yeah. So, well, it I'm almost weird. feels like the all new Hawkeye was kind of a fill in story, like just almost like the Ant Man and some of the other ones that have yeah. been. Oh, yeah. You know, it's like outside of Secret Wars and just like, hey, let's have some Marvel stuff going on that's not Secret Wars stuff. And like, eh, okay. Uh, I don't know. We'll see. I'm pretty sure, I, but it's um, the writer from All New Hawkeye is doing the All New Newer Hawkeye. <laughs> the new, new, all new. new no, really, really, new it's new. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, that'll be interesting. Well, you know, I'm I, I'm sort of excited to see what happens with the fallout of Secret Wars. I'm more excited just to see what happens with Secret Wars because we yeah. just hit issue four. You know, now we're on the halfway back mark. end, halfway mark, and this is usually where things start to fall apart. This yeah. this is usually where I feel like the writers were like, okay, I've said what I want. Just do something to wrap it up. But, you know, there's so much unanswered, so let's – Let's push through, guys. Let's you know, let's let's hopefully have four more good issues and have a good solid wrap to this this series, so that we don't feel like, wow, we wasted our entire summer on that crap. Because I have, I have faith in Hickman. Yeah, I, I've really liked his stuff. You know, um, I liked Original Sin up to a point. You know, five or six, like issue six was about it. Then, and seven and eight was like, oh, what happened here? Yeah. Um, but I don't know. I, I've liked I've liked Hickman stuff, so we'll see. I... Yeah. Okay. Hopefully it's good. <clears throat> so that's it for comics this week. That was a lot of stuff, and there's still stuff out there we didn't pick up. I know there was a new book from Broadsword Tarot. Um, you know, one of the, like Black Rose or whatever. Um, so those folks always do some very interesting stuff. I don't know if you ever seen Broadsword comic stuff, mm-hmm. lots of stuff hanging out there um but it's it's a good looking book you know yeah um it's more of a mature reader book or something definitely definitely okay. uh we had a couple xenoscope books out this week but my shop didn't actually have them uh, i did not see them either yeah i thought that was interesting um there was supposed to be um aliens versus zombies number one which looked pretty cool and we'll have that on our show next week, um, or uh, just another Xenoscope Monday on Monday. We'll have um, the other one was Alice in what, Wonderland. Tenth Wonderland, Wonderland. yep, yep, the, the one shot, um, and that was pretty cool. That had a really neat twist to it. So we'll talk yeah. about that, that one too. Those That's one shots have been story. a great jumping on point for people to get familiar with the world. So if you haven't, have never read Xenoscope stuff before, pick up one of these one shots. They're they're a launch title. Um, they'll get you into the world and then, uh, you know, you can kind of go, Oh, well, that's weird. That's cool. That kind of piques my interest. And then you can go pick up the other books and see what you like. So, um, other big stuff out this week, uh, dice masters released a new, uh, age of Ultron set. And that was really cool. I opened uh, about 20 packs and got some cool stuff. Um, I put it away, but, uh, uh, pulled a super rare Thanos out of the first 20 packs I opened. So I was like, yay! Um, just some cool stuff. Neat new mechanics. A lot of team-based stuff, which is pretty cool. Uh, we'll talk about Dice Masters another time. Have a show where we just kind of run through the game itself. It's very, very straightforward game. Very simple to learn. Um, you know, simple to learn, difficult to master. Um, <laughs> a lot of challenges, you know, in building your teams and 
Uh, it's it's pretty fun. It's a neat game. It's a neat mixture of a collectible card game and a, a game of chance with the dice. So a lot of uh, little tricks and things you can play too. So it's it's cool. It it appeals to a lot of different types of gamers. Yeah. Um, I'm still just looking for the X Men exclusive. They're like, well, they have a set that's just X Men. Yeah, uncanny. So they yeah. they came out with uh, Avengers versus X Men the first time, and then there were there was Uncanny X Men. And then they did a Yu-Gi-Oh set, you know, kind of mixing, mixing and matching. Then they did a uh, Dungeons and Dragons set, which was really cool. Had some neat stuff in it. And then they've done um, the um, Justice League set for DC. That's the first DC set that's out. Some pretty cool stuff in there. Uh, really neat Constantine, super rare. That's like super pricey. Oh, yeah. And now, and now the new um, Age of Ultron series that's coming out. So there's also supposed to be um, Trinity War, I believe, is the next set, and that'll be DC based. And mm-hmm. they're doing a Trinity War, um, you know, challenge series every month now with some some uh, uh, organized play stuff. So I'm planning on going tomorrow night, I think, to play. I haven't been for a long time, so cool. I guess I'll have to make a team and actually play. <laughs> well, I haven't done that for famous. a long time either. Yeah, mm-hmm. I know. But I only have one die. You know, you have to have more than one die in order to make him work. So yeah. uh, we'll see. We'll see. But yeah, some cool stuff. I mean, it's uh, there's always something new out there. If you're a comic book fan, you know, it's it's always good to check out other things and see what's out there. Um, some great new pop figures out this week. Funko Pop stuff, you know, like you can see in the background here. Um, Rocket Raccoon holding Baby Groot, little potted Groot. That was, um, it's actually one of the San Diego Comic-Con exclusives, but at Hot Topic, you could find the Funko Summer Convention exclusive version of that. Um, and I've seen that now, you know, like 15 bucks in the store that people are flipping it and selling it for 30 or $40 online, which is crazy. Um, there's a new, uh, Barnes & Noble had an exclusive fourth doctor from Doctor Who. Uh, that was really cool because he has a handful of jelly babies which is awesome. So I love that. Um, that was a, an exclusive Barnes and Noble. Um, trying to think there was a couple other ones that I saw. There's like a golden Frieza from uh, Dragon Ball Z and uh, crystal Heisenberg from breaking bad, oh, nice. like nice. a blue crystal, like the meth, which is nice. awesome. Yeah. I want to find him. I haven't, I haven't found him, but I've seen them people again, flipping them for 30 bucks. It's like, man, um, I picked up some other fun stuff. I, I remember um, I went to Walmart and I actually found the Bumblebee, the Walmart exclusive Bumblebee. They still had them on the shelf. So bought one of him, but anyway, just some neat stuff. I, I like uh, finding, you know, little finds like that pop figure stuff. So if mm-hmm. you guys collect pop figures, you know, leave us a comment, let us know kind of what your biggest find is. Um, I think my biggest one really <laughs> was before I even knew anything about them. I went to Barnes and Noble and they had uh, the Halo Master Chief. And it was blue. And I was like, well, that's cool looking. I'll buy that. And there's a Barnes and Noble exclusive sticker on it. I don't know what that means. I just put him up on my shelf and uh, he's worth like a hundred bucks wow. now. Yeah. I paid eight ninety five for him. So that's kind of neat. You don't get that every day, you know? So, right. It's cool. Now, I guess we'll go Funko stories. I guess my biggest find was the Walgreens exclusive set. Oh gosh. That was that was random. I just <laughs> went in there looking to think maybe they'll have you know because I'd, I'd got something there before, and they had like good prices on them, yeah. and it just so happened that they had that whole set of you know black suit Spider Man, Venom, Punisher, and Spider Man twenty ninety nine. Yep. And I didn't even get the Venom. I bought Punisher, Spider Man twenty ninety nine, and black suit Spider Man, and then when I got home, kicked myself. And went went back the next morning, and they still had the one Venom left. Oh, thankfully. cool! But they didn't have any other. I'm pretty sure I was the only person that went to that store that got the set. Wow! I'll put it that way. So I was happy with it. That's cool. I know a lot of people were complaining to corporate Walgreens because, like our our store here, the one Walgreens we have, nothing. I went in there like the week they released, and they were supposed to have come out like that Thursday. I went in Thursday morning. They had one. Iron Patriot, the box was all torn up. That was mm-hmm. it. Only thing in the whole section. I was like, and I walked back through the guys like, it's back there, but you're not going to find anything. It's like, okay. So you guys pick through them and put them on eBay. Is that what you're doing? Yeah. And that's what we found. 
Uh, you know, a lot of those stores, people who were unpacking were doing that. They were snatching them, uh, buying them, and then turn around and sell them on eBay. So that's pretty sad. I mean, it, you know, flipping like that, whatever. It, it's part of the market. It's the way people do things. You know, I'm not going to not buy a couple issues of something if I think it's going to be popular, like Empire of the Dead. You know, mm-hmm. I picked up a, a few issues, but I picked them up after the fact. So, you know, first it, act three is already going on and now, Hey, it got picked up as a TV show. It's worth going and picking up a couple more issues just in case it becomes worth something, you know? Right. Oh yeah. Um, but to get them as soon as they come out and just start selling them for, you know, way more than what they're worth. I, I think that's a little, um, that just, I mean, then you're just taking advantage of the market. You don't actually like right. the product per se. You just like see something you can make money off of. Yep. Yep. So, but you know, collectibles is a speculator speculators market. So if oh yeah, if people don't like that, then just don't buy them from those people. Yep. That's yep. that's all. So stuff is only worth what you're willing to pay for it. That's right. It's the value is in the eye of the highest bidder. Yep. Very true. So, um, well, okay. So don't forget, we have the giveaway, and you'll have to back up a little bit in the show to find out how to get that free little Ant Man guy. You know. And we'll, we will ship this out. You can ask our other winners. Uh, we've given away some cool stuff on this show or different shows um, on our channel. And mm-hmm. uh, this is just one more great item that we have to give away. So don't forget to do that. We're going to talk about pulls and taking care of your comics. So you want to talk about I don't have and pull, you? So. so let me tell you about a pull. All right. Some What's shops. The pull <laughs> so. Comic book stores, or a local comic shop as we call them, are stores dedicated to selling comics. So, (laughs) I know, it's amazing. Um, Back in my day, you used to have a little spinny rack, and they were all folded up. And Yeah, Yeah, it was at the Uh, Top Shop. It was called the Top Shop. (laughs) Really? We had a little grocery store in the the town I grew up in, in this little grocery store in town, and I would bike 12 miles to town on my bike. And uh, seriously, it was really 12 miles. Bike to town, go to the grocery store, get my comics for you know seventy five cents a piece, throw them in my backpack, and then bike home and read them. Now, sometimes my mom would drive, like down to Wadena, which is like thirty miles south of where we lived, and uh, go take me to the drugstore, go up to Monaga to the drugstore. Anyway, <clears throat> now we have these newfangled things um, called computers. <laughs> Anyway, so you go to your local store and ask them, hey, I'd like to do a pull. And sometimes if your store is a good store um, and they trust you, you know, let's say you have a good relationship with them and you've been dealing with them for a while. um, What they'll do is they'll order books based on a list that you provide them. You say, this is what I want to buy every week or every, you know, whenever it comes out. Um, And they'll order based on pulls. And they'll keep a, a stack of them there for you. You know, if you get three or four books a week or 10 books a week or whatever, and then you just come in on Wednesday or Thursday or Friday, whenever, and pay for them. Or sometimes they'll have you pay up front. Uh, and so that, you know, you know, Hey, next week it's going to be $40, $35, whatever. And be sure you have, have that money there to, to pay for it. So um, it's a good option. If you don't want to miss issues, um, you know, sometimes you won't get the variants. You'll have to go in and pick them up yourself. But it's a, it's a cool way to sometimes get some extra stuff. I've uh, had on my poll, you know, there'll be a variant issue that comes out, a variant cover. And my shop will throw that variant cover in for me instead of the regular cover, which is it's pretty cool. I like that. Yeah, wow. That's amazing. So, yeah. And sometimes, you know, if uh, if the owner is working the polls or, or one of the other guys who knows me and he sees something he thinks I'll like, he'll throw that in there too. So it helps to get a relationship with your shop and, deal, you know, deal with them pretty closely. Yes, so. yes, it does. Even even if your shop doesn't have a pull list option, um, it's still good to get to know everybody there. And yeah. I mean, you're going to be in a, If you're like me, you go in there and you hang out for a little while. It's not just to run in, grab your stuff, and get out. Right. So, I mean, I've I've kind of gotten to the point where I talk to them. You know, the people that are in there, I see them all the time. Yeah. I see them as much as some people I work with. You know, it's just <laughs> one of those type of things. It's like, hey, how's it going? What you know? What's out this week? What's good? What's good? So, you know, and, and with that, then maybe when you're up at the register, they throw you an extra little promotional poster that came out this week. Yeah. You know, it's not all the time that everybody gets all the promotional stuff that come out. Maybe you get like this little cool Secret Wars punch out figures. I mean, it's something. You know? It's cool. Yeah. 
So, all right. Well, that's, uh, you know, those are our polls. If you guys have questions about anything like that, um, just, I've been collecting comics for a long time, like a long time. So, Since you know, the you 80s have, for me. Yeah, I, I think uh, 85, 86 was probably when I started. Um, and, you know, I had read comics before that, but 85, 86 was when I really started first kind of collecting. Like so. caring about them? Yeah. yeah, got yeah. Me, got and, you know, just a couple of years. Not many. Yeah. And there was times when I didn't have boxes and I just made my own boxes. In fact, uh, in high school, I built a filing cabinet to put my comics in. So, you know, it was kind of, yeah. Um, So one of the, one of probably the instrumental tools in taking care of your comics are bags and boards. And uh, you want to make sure you get bags and boards that fit your comics. Exactly. And that's, uh, you know, it's another thing I did with, uh, you know, the uh, covers, uh, the special covers that come out, I always put them in a bag and board. Mm-hmm. So um, you've got uh, Mylar uh, bags. And there's different types of bags, you know, depending on how much you want to pay. Uh, and then the uh, the uh, inserts, the boards are, uh, you always want to get the ones that are acid free and coated. Mm-hmm. I like the coated ones. Yeah. Um, they my shop smooth, usually, that's the, that's they, the difference. They do. Now, I've had them, you know, when you open up the package, and sometimes it says coded on one side, and you have to kind of figure out which side is coded. Yep. Sometimes I've had both sides coded. I mean, you know, as long as one side's coded, you're good to go. Yep. Um, but that, I, what I always had a tr- trouble with was like, well, which side do I put against the comic? That you put the coded coded. side. Yeah, the slick side against the comic. That's the way you protect it from acid and and stuff like that. Um, So, you know, put your comic in there, and then you want to seal it up some way. And there's big disputes about how you seal up your comics. I'm a one strip of tape person. I do one piece of tape across the back just like that. Seals it up. Yep, me too. Um, Yep. Other people I've seen will do two strips, you know, down like this. Or one strip down, it's whatever you know. I like one strip across because it keeps the corners down. It keeps it nice and flat and organized. Right. The two the two strip of tape method, um, I've found it's a lot easier to get your cover caught when you're putting it in or taking it out of that yep. bag board. So. Yep. Now the problem I've had with a one strip is when I want to take the book back out and read it again. Because then you got to be careful opening it back up. Now, sometimes you just tear the tape, and you just tear the tape. Then you just put another piece of tape on it when you go put yes, it away. Big deal. I mean, I go to Walmart, and I get a three-pack of these, the Duck brand scotch tape. Yep. And, yep. you know, they're uh, they're kind of opaque, which is cool. Like, I think three pa- three uh, rolls are for, like, two twenty nine. So it's pretty cheap. You know, it's it's really inexpensive to take care of your books. Um, so yeah, you get that, you get a hundred bags and a hundred boards, uh, for, I think I get a hundred bags for like four ninety nine or five twenty nine, and a hundred boards for like $11. So I don't know how much you pay, Justin, way I more. Think it's like 20 bucks for, oh, for both. Wow. Yeah. Cause one of them is like eleven ninety nine, The other one's like six ninety nine. So plus tax and everything. It's like 20 bucks uh, for bags and boards. Yeah, and you can find them online. There's places that do just bags and boards. Um, you know, it, it just all depends. Um, they also now have um, bags, self-sealing bags. Oh, yeah. Yep, I've so, seen those. those are so cool. you don't have to use tape. Yeah, yeah a little more even, expensive. I haven't even priced them yet. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, they're a little more expensive. I've seen them. Um, but that is that is pretty cool. There's, there's all kinds of different options. You know, um, some people like the heavier bags. Some people like the single uh, the single mile are, you know, it just depends on your preference. Yep. Um, some people put like bigger bags for their comics so they don't squish them in. I like to, to use the modern or the, it's modern, yep, um, modern boards and bags for the regular comics. And then anything, you know, older, like silver age, they have silver age bags and golden age, they have golden age bags. So uh, there are a little, little difference in size. You'll notice um, I had a bag of comics that my mom bought for me at a flea market somewhere, and it had um, one of DC's old series, The Shadow, number two in there, which is pretty cool. It was like from 70s or late 60s, and uh, it's a Silver Age book, and I don't have any Silver Age bags and boards, so I had to go to my shop and buy one Silver Age bag and board, like 25 cents a piece, so like whatever. Yeah. But that's the best way to take care of your comics, you know, and then I use... Um, the um what are they called uh, bc bcw the, sh- the short boxes i don't i don't like the long ones 
I like the shorter ones. Um, I don't know what your preference is, Justin. Long boxes. You like the long ones? I, you know, I have a few like my X Men sets in a long box, and I have a couple other sets that are in long boxes. But if I could transition them all, just for the fact that I've moved a lot in mm-hmm. my history, um, so the smaller boxes don't kill my back as much. You know, um, just depends. It's easier to organize. I feel like with the little, the the shorter boxes, you can kind of stack them different ways and make and and utilize your space a little better than with the big long box. So yeah, on the other side of my desk, in the corner, and that corner has seven long boxes in it. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, and they're cool. I mean, you get you know you get the heavy duty cardboard ones. Um, they are very very solid. Um, of course, you know, I know there's been some folks lately who've had some floods and things. Um, the cardboard boxes aren't going to help you there. Uh, you definitely want to consider maybe some shelving to put them up off the ground. Um, you know, always hate to hear those stories, but I know that happens. So, yeah. Um, other than that, I mean, those are the two big things, the cardboard boxes and the uh, bags and boards for your books. That's really the, the best ways to take care of them. So, right. Yep. If, if you're going to put them up on your wall, like, I do some of these just make sure they're not in direct sunlight and you're good to go. Yep. All right. Well, that's uh, that's about all we can talk about comics this week. I think we, uh, we, we need to wrap this show up. So (laughs) (laughs) we covered the gambit of everything that's out. So if we didn't pick up something that you would like to hear us talk about, leave a comment below and let us know. Yep. Or if there's something that you want to talk about, leave us a comment to tell us how cool some book is and maybe we'll check it out. Um, You know, if there's games or toys or other stuff you want us to talk about, let us know. Uh, We'll check that stuff out too. Some big things coming this fall, you know, gaming wise. I mean, some really cool uh, new games. I know the big one for July was uh, Batman Arkham Knight, which I did not get a copy of yet. Um, Okay. But the things for the fall, I mean, uh, you know, Harmonix is coming out with the new Rock Band game for the Xbox One and the PS4. That'll definitely be cool. Um, Guitar Hero, I think, has a new one, Guitar Hero Live, that's going to be out. So they're bringing those music games back, which is is great. Um, Disney Infinity has a new 3.0 with Star Wars play sets, which will be cool. Little interactive uh, toys and stuff. Right before Uh, the movie. Yep, yep. And then Lego has uh, Lego Dimensions, which is kind of their answer to Disney Infinity. Uh, it's it's little playset blocks that you can build to play within the game. So interactive uh, toys, same kind of thing. Oh. So it's cool. A lot of stuff out there. There's just so many things. Um, I wish I could play them all. You know, I feel like uh, Ash Ketchum out there. Got to got to read them all. Got to play them all. Got to not talk about Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Okay. <laughs> All right, everybody. Well, we, th- we really thank you for taking time. We know sometimes we run ramble on, um, and you probably skip ahead a few seconds and go, when are they going to be done talking about Pokemon? Um, or maybe you skipped ahead to find out when we were going to talk about Pokemon. Um, you never know. You never know. So takes all kinds. Um, please share, like, comment. We really appreciate that. Um, definitely give us a like on our new Facebook page, uh, Two Comic Book Dudes. And, uh, you know, hey, if you haven't already, go to our Facebook page for Comic Booked and uh, give us a like there. You can go to our website, comicbook.com. Check us out. I'm on Twitter, um, Ace of Bear, A-C-E-O-F-B-A-I-R. Justin, you're on Twitter as well? Yep, Exile State, E-X-I-L-E State. Okay, cool. So, yeah, you can catch us at all those places. Send us good, bad, and ugly. That's right, might as well. All right. Thanks Thanks for joining us this week. Hope you got some comics and read them and love them. Talk to you later. Goodbye.